So I just got these foam panels. And uh, the double stick tape isn't quite up to holding them <laughs> yet. I got to do, I got to work on that a little bit more, but that's all right. So I just got back from seeing Avengers Infinity War. And it came out a little bit early here in Thailand. So I had a chance to see it on Wednesday afternoon instead of having to wait until Thursday night or Friday morning, whatever. And it was, so I'm going to spoil it. Just fair warning. Generally, I, I don't like doing spoilers, but figure I'll, I'll just say it now. I'm going to spoil this movie. I was so uninvested throughout this movie. I, I really didn't have high expectations. Well, that's not fair. I had really high and really low expectations for this movie. I knew it was either going to blow everything else out of the water or it was going to be a big letdown that let, ended on some cliffhanger that was not satisfying. And it was definitely the second one. First, some of the things that I enjoyed about this movie, Thor was the best in this movie than he's been in any of the other movies. I enjoyed him the most. He was the most fun character in the entire movie. And he was just constantly, his jokes made sense and they were, they're always worth it. The majority of the other jokes, the majority of the other characters were always quippy, but none of it felt uh, authentic to the story or to what was going on. It just felt kind of forced and it really, you know, it really didn't work well uh, other than Thor. Thor was great. <laughs> I thought Elizabeth Olsen, I thought she did a great job, even though this is the most she's looked like her sisters and she didn't have an accent for the majority of the movie. I think it's it's kind of goofy when movies like series do that. They introduce a character with a very distinct accent and then it slowly fades away because that's not actually the accent of the actor or the actress. And unless I'm wrong, I did not seem like she talked like she did in Age of Ultron, but that's a very minor. Drax, Drax had a few moments that were actually pretty funny when he was eating the nuts in the spaceship pretending to be invisible. I thought that was a great, great scene. That was a great uh, moment. While I still don't really like Doctor Strange, I enjoyed him in this a lot more than I've enjoyed him in any others. I think he also, um, this is a conversation I had with Taylor, but about Ant-Man, about how he does better against other characters and uh, opposed to being kind of solo. Uh, I thought Doctor Strange did better uh, with Tony Stark than he did in his own movie and then even with uh, Peter Parker. I thought it worked a lot better. One of the other things that I appreciate, I guess, is that it, it's a really long movie. Uh, I think it's like three hours long somewhere around there close to three hours if not at three hours didn't feel that long but it did feel like a long movie so if you consider let's say two hours being a long movie this felt closer to that range so it felt like a a normal length long movie not an extra long movie if that makes any sense at all i felt like most of the motivations of the the main cast the main ensemble, the Avengers, made sense. I felt like everything they were doing felt like legitimate. Like, okay, that I get that. That that seems like a reasonable way to go about handling the situation or doing this thing, whatever. Uh, Thanos, on the other hand, I I still don't understand. I, if you're if you're watching, please explain it to me in the comments below what he was doing. I'll, I'll get into that in a minute, but. Uh, I'll explain what I didn't understand in a minute, but it, it didn't make any sense to me that uh, I feel like Rocket and Thor were a good buddy pair better way better than Hulk and Thor like Rocket and Thor were a lot more fun like if you had to choose between the two sets that's who you want to see a buddy like a, a buddy travel movie with like kind of what Thor Ragnarok was sold as I would much rather see it with Rocket. So I, I thought putting them together was great. I was happy the Guardian showed up, but it did feel a bit heavy on them. It felt like they were in it quite a bit, which not, again, not a problem per se, but it, it did feel overly weighted to their story. And I know uh, Glamora is, Gamora, Glamora? Oh, 
I know she is connected to Thanos the most, and it makes more sense why it would be so connected between the Guardians and Thanos, but it still felt overly uh, focused on them for it being an Avengers movie. So to get into some of the things I don't like, the movie opens right where I believe the post credit scene of Thor Ragnarok, Thor Ragnarok ends with their ship facing off with Thanos' ship. Avengers Infinity War opens with Thanos already having killed everybody on that ship. Thor was dying, or well, Thor was beat up laying on the ground. All the, the momentum and all the characters from Thor Ragnarok are gone. I just, Aegis Alba, I just Alba, uh, Takawatiti's character, which biggest loss in this movie, if he's actually dead. They, I don't think they showed him dead, but he was probably my favorite character. Uh, there's potential that none of this matters, and I'll get to at the end of my, I don't know what to call this, review or recap of the movie. So Thor is beaten. Loki is surrendered and Loki goes to Thanos and says, you know what? I'm going to help you out. I will serve you. And then he tries to stab him. Thanos stops him. And then the Hulk shows up and tries to fight Thanos. Hulk loses. And I just Alba sends him off back to uh, uh, America earth. Sends him. He ends up landing in Dr. Strange's uh, building in New York. Now Earth knows that Thanos is coming and what his plan is. And at this point, Thanos had one stone. And Hulk is terrified. I like the idea of Hulk being afraid of Thanos. Being so afraid that he's not willing to take over Bruce Banner's body anymore. And they implied it a bit. They never like came out and sh- uh, strictly said it. But I felt like it was implied well enough that that's, you kind of get it. Like Hulk has PTSD Basically, he's like, I don't, I'm done. I don't want to fight anybody anymore. It's all you, Bruce. Which I think is a cool thing that I wish they would have played on a little bit more. But that's, I mean, that's splitting hairs. So back on the ship, Thanos has Loki. He knows Loki tried to kill him. And he snaps Loki's neck. And I was, at this point in the movie, I was like, perfect. My main thing about Infinity War is I want to see these characters die. I know that sounds dark. I know it's probably not reasonable. But I I figured Thanos is this huge threat. They've been building up to for 10 years, 15 movies, 16 movies, whatever it is. They've been building towards this character who is the biggest threat they will ever face. There needs to be a lot of death. Starting off killing Loki, I thought, great choice. Tom Hiddleston is a great character, or uh, an actor. Loki is a a decent character, but he's kind of done his whole arc. There's not a lot left for Loki. So I was like, you know what, that's a a good choice. He's He's a beloved character, but he's done. It's okay, you can put Loki on the shelf. The good start, it's gonna be just Thanos picking one by one, or picking him off one by one throughout the movie. And I was invested pretty heavily at this point of who is going to die. I thought a lot of people from phase one were going to die. I thought, you know, a lot of their contracts are up anyways. A lot of their character stories are kind of played out. Like, this seems like a good time to get rid of beloved characters who need to get rid of anyways. So use Thanos as a reason just to kill him off. And so I was fully expecting at least a third of the Avengers to die. And while it's sort of true, I don't think it matters at all i'm just gonna jump to it at the end thanos gets all the gemstones and clicks his fingers and half of the population turns into dust i'm sure i'm gonna miss a few and i i I may get some of these wrong but bucky died um spider-man died dr strange died black panther died Vision died, but he got the the stone ripped out of his head. Scarlet Witch died. Pretty much all of the Guardians of the Galaxy died. And so I'm sure there was more. I don't really, I don't remember everyone. But those ones stick out specifically because unless Marvel was playing a joke to throw people off the set, which I don't think they were doing, I am fairly certain Spider-Man 2 has been announced. Black Panther 2 has been announced. Guardians of the Galaxy 3 has been announced. 
So more than half of the people who got disintegrated by Thanos have movies that are coming out in the next few years. <laughs> and so this whole movie, all the stakes do not matter. I knew it going in. I thought, you know, maybe maybe they're going to kill some people, but they have the the green Doctor Strange's time stone. I think it's the time stone. Sorry if I'm wrong about that. But basically he can go back in time. And they do that a few times. Thanos uses it a few times. And Doctor Strange uses it uh, to manipulate time. So I was like, okay, well, this is probably not going to matter in the long run. Because they can just undo a lot of stuff. But I knew it was a problem pretty early on in the movie. In the park fight. So when Bruce Banner and... uh, Tony Stark and Doctor Strange are fighting the kids of Thanos. I don't remember their names. I don't really care to figure it out. They're fighting them in New York. And Spider-Man shows up. And Tony Stark says, Spider-Man, or, you know, Peter, whatever. He's like, where'd you come from? And he's like, oh, the future. The next movie, he's going to get sent back in time somehow. Unless I misheard it and made that up completely. I am so certain Peter Parker told Tony he was from the future helping him fight off Thanos' kids. As soon as that happened, as soon as I heard it, I was like, oh, well, none of this matters. This is all going to be undone, fixed, and taken care of in the next, you know, probably the next Avengers. And it's going to be played out similar to... The Harry Potter where she, where Hermione has the time thing, you know, where they like set up all these little clues of like, oh, look at, we manipulated this, we manipulated that. I'm fairly certain that's going to happen. I could be wrong. But again, like I said, Spider-Man 2 is announced. So Peter Parker dying at the end of this doesn't really seem that plausible. Black Panther 2 has been announced. So Black Panther dying doesn't seem that plausible. Guardians coming back in the third movie so all of them being dead doesn't seem that plausible although Glamora Glamora, whatever her name is Thanos did kill he threw her off uh, the mountain or whatever cliff to get the soul stone so I think they did kill people which was Loki who got his neck snapped Glamora Glamora, (laughs) who got thrown off a cliff and Vision, who got the t- uh, the Mind Stone ripped out of his face, which was actually pretty uh, gruesome <laughs> for for a Marvel movie. I was kind of surprised. I know he's a robot, but they treat him like a person. He looked like a person for a while, and so when that happened, I was like, "Oh, that's I'm I'm impressed that they actually went that far with that." My biggest issue is with Thanos's plan. Correct me if I'm wrong. Thanos, on his home planet, I believe it was Titan, before it got destroyed and overrun and, you know, just kind of fell apart, he came up with a solution that we need to do a lottery, a death lottery, and kill half of the population. We're overpopulated and there's just too much happening or too much. There's not enough to go around. We need to kill half of the population and everyone the, the half that survives will be better for it. Consider him a madman. No one listens. And the whole the whole world falls apart. I think I'm, I'm accurate on that part. So he's going to civilizations that are in a similar state and are falling apart. And he goes and kills half of the population for them and fixes their planet. And he says for Gamora Gamora, her, her planet was fixed because of Thanos. He said, everyone everyone on your planet now has full bellies and happy hearts. I don't think he said happy hearts, but something something along those lines. Okay. So I, I, I still think I'm pretty accurate. Now he wants to get all the gemstones, all the infinity stones, to enact this plan throughout the universe or Earth. Not, not, not sure. I, I believe the entire universe. He wants to destroy half the people... In the entire universe, or aliens, whatever, 
to help with overpopulation of the universe. So that that's where I start getting a little shaky. I believe with all the infinity infin, infinity stones, why could he not make enough supplies for everyone without having to kill everyone? If his crusade was noble, which I feel like they try to put out or put forward, that his crew his his vision, his plan was for the best of the universe, of the best of the galaxy. What's bigger? Galaxy? Universe? Best for everyone. Why not make it better for everyone who exists instead of killing half of them? I I didn't quite understand what the power behind his glove was. I knew it could destroy, but couldn't it also create? Couldn't it do the will of the person holding on or holding it or wearing it? Who has all the, the infinity stones? I don't know. I please if you if you have a better explanation or you understand what he was doing, please explain it to me because I I legitimately am very confused about it. I mean, there's a, there's a ton of stuff that happens. I mean, it's a three hour long movie. I'm not gonna go through everything, just kind of the things that stood out to me. Again, a similar issue that I had with Black Panther, and I think I called it shaky cam for my Black Panther review. This is not shaky cam, I realized in this movie. What they do that makes me insane, the, the, I don't, maybe there's a technical term for it, but it's like blurry cam. They put a filter over everything to make it look like the animated characters are moving quicker than they are. So you never see them cleanly doing anything in action. When they're fighting with each other, everything is out of focus. Everything is moving too quickly for it to be a still frame. It's like they're impo- or, uh, laying top two frames over each other to try to make it unclear so it looks more realistic. If your movie is f- so focused on action scenes, make action scenes that we can see what is happening. Just because you can have everything in frame, but if you can't see it, why are you doing it? I do not understand it. I, it makes me crazy about Marvel movies. They have a ton of money. They have so much time that's going into all this stuff. It just feels lazy. It, I, I don't understand. I, I legitimately don't get why the action stuff is so boring. The, it, it's starting to feel like Transformer movies where they're just throwing stuff on screen and oh well just infer what's happening so towards the end of the movie Doctor Strange takes a look at 14,406,000 possibilities of the future and he says I'm looking for a way for us to win and Tony asks him well which how many do we win in and Doctor Strange says one. In one, in 14 million, I think 406, they have the chance of winning. I am so confident that everything that happened in this movie was Doctor Strange setting up the one possibility for them to win. Even though it seems like, oh, they definitely lost, Thanos got all the stones, Thanos. You know, destroyed half the universe. It definitely seems like Doctor Strange set up the one possibility for them to win, and it's just frustrating. This time travel stuff is not a good element for storytelling. It makes it really difficult when your characters can see the future or manipulate the past, because then there's zero stakes. Motivation behind Thanos didn't make sense, and I just, I was just so bored. As soon as Spider-Man said, I'm from the future, I, I couldn't make myself care. I just could not get into the movie anymore. And it was a disappointment because I've been looking forward to this movie for a long time. I thought this is going to be the best of them all. And maybe that's my own fault for having my expectations too high. But also, is that is that my fault? Is that something that I should blame myself for when I feel like that's the 
what they want you to think. That's what the story they're telling. Like, this is going to be great. I don't know. Maybe I'm just dumb. <laughs> I'm sure I forgot other stuff. I feel like this video has gone on long enough. I did not like the movie. I was pretty disappointed in it. Uh, I mean, I'm sure if you liked it, that's great. I, I genuinely don't judge people for liking something I dislike. I don't think that I'm the end all be all on opinions that if yours doesn't match up with mine, then you're wrong. But I, I, I don't see what was good about this movie. I feel like Marvel is getting consistently worse. It's on a downtrend and it's, it's frustrating because I feel so invested into these movies. Also, they're the only movies that really come through town in this Thailand town that I live in. So when it's all I get a chance to see on the big screen, it gets extra frustrating. So, but you know, I would love to know what you guys thought of the movie. I would love to get some answers on the Thanos stuff and, uh, Taylor and I will be back. Uh, I think this weekend with, I don't know, something's coming out. <laughs>